we have a better chance of picking up transmissions from aliens than this video getting watched. Hello YouTube, or three people on YouTube, my name is Sutton Hay, and today I want to talk about the three lessons I learned from high school speech and debate that I believe make me a better lifter and will continue to make me a better lifter than those I compete against. So I did speech and debate in high school for the two years that I could. I started my sophomore year and did really well sophomore and junior year, and then I moved senior year and couldn't do it. So speech and debate is very different than anything I was doing in lifting. I had basically decided not to train while I was doing debate because if I couldn't be the best at training, why would I want to do it? I had that mentality in debate too. If I couldn't be the best in an event, I wouldn't try it anyway. And so my attitude had to change in debate. And because of the lessons I learned there, whenever I started training again, whenever I came back at it much more seriously, I was very successful and have been ever since. So lesson number one, play to your natural strengths. In speech and debate, I always had the natural strength of impromptu of doing things on the fly, of not really having to rely on tons and tons of prep work, but being able to win an audience over pretty quickly. And that led me to choose the events that I was going to do really good at. The fact is that with lifting or debate or anything, we're all going to have things we're going to be best at. Maybe you're not going to be the best power lifter, but maybe strongman or Olympic weightlifting or a combat sport or something is better for you to be doing. And if you really have your mind on being the best that there is out there and really achieving greatness, why not play to your natural strengths to begin with? The reason that you should play to your natural strengths, though, is because success will lead you to encouragement. It will not lead you to happiness, but a little bit of encouragement along the way as you succeed in your goals goes a long way to keep you um, fighting for those things that you want. The second lesson I learned from speech and debate that, I've taken, that I have taken over lifting is to be different, to stand out. And the way you do this is by being positive. I remember I had just turned 15 years old and I was at the Newman Smith High School Speech and Debate Tournament in you know the Dallas, Texas area. And I was in novice extent, my coach assigned me up for that, and that meant a 7.30 a.m. draw, and I was terrified. The extent, for those of you who don't know, is where you go up and you draw one of three topics and then you pick which one you want to speak on. You have 30 minutes to write a speech and memorize a speech that's between five and seven minutes in length. Realistically, novices are expected to speak for about three minutes, but man, was I nervous. I remember walking in the room and even the experienced debaters were sitting in their chairs and you know fiddling with their fingers and no one could seem to relax. So that first round, I couldn't sit down because I was too nervous. I decided I would just start pacing around the top of the auditorium, and that actually became a habit for me for the next two years. Um, the falcon doth encircle his prey before he strikes. But something I noticed, the, the big takeaway, is that while, whenever my 30 minutes was up, and it was time for me to go to my round, I, along with all the other second speakers, stood up to walk out, and we all looked like this. You know, about as nervous as you can imagine. And so what I decided to do in the hallway between the, the theater and the room I was supposed to speak in was to just start smiling. So I started walking like this. And I started, you know, raising my eyebrows and giving every indication that I was confident. And then I started feeling confident without putting too many emphasis on, you know, act to feel. It freaked my opponents out. And I felt good for doing it. And every round that day, I would walk out intentionally with a smile on my face. It caught people off guard. The judges liked to see it. In my very first tournament, I took the Novice Extemp Award. They never let me compete as a novice again. And that was a repeated story of success throughout high school that every time I brought that positive attitude in, no matter what the event was, I would usually walk home with the gold because everyone else was just focusing on remembering what their points were. But for me, whenever you walk in the room, you want to be someone that the judges liked. In powerlifting, to kind of bring it to bring it back, and in any sort of weight training, there's this idea that you walk in and you're trying to deal with your issues, and this is where you let all your anger out, which, of course, there's a place for venting in powerlifting. But the problem is, and I'm guilty of this so many times, is that whenever you miss a lift, whenever you have a really bad day, you beat yourself up and go, man, I am terrible. I'm no good, I'm weak because of this, and you let it discourage you. What if you went into every training day 
with that smile on your face because you know you're going to make progress. If you're in this like I am for decades and you want to be training for a long, long time, what does today really matter? You give it everything you have, but recognize that there are factors outside of your control and you may not make all the lifts you need to today. That's okay. Be positive. Have a hopeful vision for your future and that goes for your entire life, not just in lifting. It will go a long way. The third lesson I learned from high school speech and debate that has helped me as a weightlifter is that success is not the same thing as happiness. Take it from someone who won a lot. Just because you walk home with the goal doesn't mean you're going to be happy. Because I can remember on the way home from a, a big regional tournament, I had two gold trophies in my hands from events that I won and won one third place award. And that third place award just stuck in my mind as a failure. And I couldn't get it off my mind as such for a long time. And I kept on thinking about what I had to do wrong. You know, there was somebody better than me in that. It was success. It was success on an unprecedented level for the amount of experience I had. But I still wasn't happy. Because the deal is, even if I said, my goal is to go to districts and to qualify to nationals. Well, I did that twice and it didn't really make me happy. Going to nationals didn't make me happy. I'm sure even winning nationals would make me happy. Because just like in speech and debate, most people who've been in the gym a long time know this. If you don't love the process, you're not going to stay with it. Because if I say, if I make this PR attempt, I'm going to be happy with myself. What happens if I miss it? What happens if I get it? I've been in the situation plenty of times whenever I pull a weight and it's a great lift and I set it down and go, now what? Because I can remember being 13 and 14 years old and thinking, man, if I could only deadlift 315, if I could just get three plates, that would be so cool. I, I would feel like the strongest person ever. Now the 315 is just one of my warm up weights. Didn't make any difference. But you have to recognize that even if you did exactly what you wanted to do today, you wouldn't be satisfied because we are created to achieve. We are created to strive to be more. Enjoy the process. Enjoy going in every day or however often you train and just pushing yourself farther a little bit, improving your form here, an extra rep there, a little bit more weight there. And as you start to enjoy the process, the results start coming as well. Because while success will not give you happiness, it will give you encouragement. So why not have thousands of little successes along the way to your goals? And why not keep your goals out in front of you so you never find out what your potential truly is? Because why would you want that? I really hope there's never a day where I pull a weight and I know that's my potential. I've reached it. I can't go any farther. Because if you think about it, that's really the most possible success you can get, but I can't imagine any more miserable moment as a lifter.